welcome to My Smart Tech TV. Today I'm joined by Felix Brookschurch, who is the CEO at Sanku. So welcome, Felix. Thank you so much. Pleasure to be here. Now, tell me about what Sanku do. Definitely. So we are a nonprofit social enterprise and we have the big mission to end malnutrition. Um, I think often people think about malnutrition as starvation, which is definitely one of the leaders of malnutrition, but we work in uh, what's called hidden hunger, which is when people have the lack of food, uh, but lack of nutrition in that food. So their bellies might be full, but they're lacking those key vital elements, uh, vitamins and minerals that we need to be strong to uh, fight disease, be smart and to grow. So um, the specific sector that we work in is in East Africa in food fortification, which literally means strengthening food with these vitamins and minerals. Um, and so we identified that people living in villages and towns, they don't go to supermarkets to buy fortified flour, which is quite common here in the West. Instead, they buy, for example, their flour from a local mill. So we developed a, a machine that attaches to these small mills, automates the process of adding these life-saving nutrients to the flour that they eat. The end results, kids get fortified flour, they get healthy, they fight disease, they grow, they become healthy, happy adults. Amazing. And the machine that you've developed is called the Dosifier. That's correct. And talk me through how that came about. How did you, you invented this. How did that, how, how did that all happen? Well, we started off definitely not thinking that's, in, let's invent a machine. We started off looking at the problem and, and, and identified that there wasn't any applicable technology to be able to fortify or add nutrients at this village level. So stepping back, we're like, okay, if there's nothing on the market, we have to literally invent one. And so I went to uh, Nepal uh, in, in Asia for two years to really start something from scratch. I had basically a blueprint, a small one uh, to start working off. And uh, after a couple of years of banging out machines in um, metal shops in, in Kathmandu, finally we installed a machine that worked, um, turned it on, it fortified. Uh, it was pretty basic, but uh, it wasn't pretty, but it worked. Uh, and uh, yeah, it fortified flour for the first time. This was almost 10 years ago. And the name of that, that village was Sanku. And so in honor of that first time the machine worked, the first day that people ate fortified flour, we named the organization Sanku. Incredible. And when you're taking that technology and you're applying it to different countries or, you know, villages that might not have, um, I suppose, the same power that we'd have in a city, how does it work? Is it, does it connect to a, a power source or how do you run the machine? Yeah, that's a great question because a lot of our early machines were burning out. They're electronic and, and require electricity, obviously. And, and so the, the power supply in those towns and villages is very unstable. So we had to build in a lot of robust kind of power protection and filtering into the machine. And now they don't burn out anymore. That's number one. And in the case that a village doesn't have electricity, and if it's off grid and very rural, we actually install a small solar panel on the top of the mill that powers the machine and they're quite small the machines are about this big can fit on the back of a bicycle weighs about 30 kgs um but what's great about the machine is not only is it doing a very accurate job a precise job of adding condensed nutrients to flour um it's also connected to the cloud through iot technology so right now on my dashboard i can see close to 700 of these machines throughout east africa um uh how much um, how much flour they're producing how much uh, fortificant or nutrients they're adding if there's any technical issues all of that is being streamed in real time back to our dashboard so we can make really cool quick operational decisions and fix machines before uh, it's too late and to restock these mills with the nutrients they need so we've gotten a lot smarter our machines are quote unquote smart as well so a very yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure it's been, yeah, quite the journey through testing and changing and making, but what are some of the challenges that you've come across that I suppose with trying to implement a technology like this into um, these different countries? Yeah, so one of the first things uh, we had to be honest about is that it didn't matter how cool we thought the machine was for us and how good it worked in the lab. It had to work in the field and it had to work for the user, the user being the miller. And so it was a very user centric process, the design process and, and journey. Um, and so a lot of the feedback and the way the machine works and functions and looks is feedback from the user. And so it was a very collaborative process. So number one, that was that was a challenge. We had to build something that was going to actually be used. Um, the second thing was it has, had to be robust to really um, survive in these rough, these rough, harsh environments of a mill. Um, we have, uh, again, close to 700 installed throughout East Africa. It's a very tropical, humid climate. There's monsoons. 
Um, they're, they're installed in dusty uh, mills. So there's a lot of you know, contaminants potentially. So we had to build a, a, a very well and sealed and enclosed to make sure that we're, we're, we're fortifying food and not making it dirty essentially. Um, and the other thing, and as I mentioned before, um, initially we didn't have that IoT connectivity, right? And so we had hundreds of machines spread out across you know, half a continent almost. Um, and we're driving around blindly to all these uh, villages to see if they're working, if they're accurate, um, wasting a lot of money on fuel, man hour, uh, vehicle service, all this. So that's, that was the decision to say, let's centralize this, let's all, link them all to the cloud. Uh, let's use IoT technology to solve a health problem, which I think is unique. And so all that together, um, you know, over the last essentially 10 years has got us to this point to this machine that's working, it's accurate and very scalable. Incredible. And with the work that you're doing, are you seeing um, other types of technologies coming in um, more so now or yeah, tell me, tell me about that. Yeah, I think food fortification, uh, the sector we work in is, is starting to get a lot more support and interest. Actually, Bill Gates uh, just prioritized it. So there's a lot more funding coming towards this sector. Um, investing, uh, you know, we work in the small scale, the small village level of food fortification sector, but the large scale sector, the more industrialized uh, part of food fortification is getting a lot of investment as well. Um, some cool technologies that have come out of this, obviously we have ours, but there's also uh, rapid test kits. And what that means is uh, basically a handheld device where you can put a flower sample in it and test the levels of iron or zinc. Um, one of our partners, BioAnalyte, has developed that. And so that's also connected to the cloud. So yeah, I think uh, you know, over the next five years, there's gonna be a lot of innovation as more support and more investment comes into the sector. Incredible. And um, you know, you said you've got over 700 machine of these machines. What are some of the impacts that you're seeing with this? Well, first and foremost, food is being fortified. Um, you know, I'll give you a scenario. One day in a village, people are eating food that doesn't have the nutrition that they need. And there's a lot of health issues and consequences because of that. Um, sadly, uh, hidden hunger or malnutrition kills 8,000 kids every single day, every single day, right? So the biggest change is that, you know, yesterday it wasn't fortified in the village. We come in, we give a machine to a miller, we train him, he starts to fortif fortify his flour. For, so for starting from that day forward, children especially are now eating fortified flour. They're building their immune systems. They can fight things like diarrhea, like a malaria, and just grow to be strong, both mentally and physically. So that's the biggest change is that now we've created these essentially these health heroes in every village and every town, these millers that have this power, the superpower to make food better for kids. Uh, and that's a game changer. And it's really targeting the, the root cause, isn't it? It's, that's the foundation. If you get that right, you know, you can fight off those diseases and you can, um, yeah, rather than trying to treat a disease, let's get to the bottom of it and kind of and start there. And um, what, oh, sorry, carry on. Well, I was going to say, you know, uh, we are in the business essentially of prevention. And I think that's how you have to look at things like this. Treatment is, you know, last resort. So we want to get to these problems before they become problems. And literally, we look at women of reproductive age and kids in those first thousand days of their life. That is the critical window to get these key nutrients like iron, zinc, folic acid, B12, the building blocks of a healthy person. Get to them then, and then you don't have to have all these issues later on and the stress that might cause on a health system of a country on the gdp of a country so really to develop a country it starts with the stomach it starts in those first thousand days and that's really our mission our focus amazing and so what's you know what's um in the future for you guys what's the plan uh, where do you see the, the company going scale it's all yeah. about you know, the problem is huge. People, there's 2 billion people suffering from micronutrient deficiencies. So, um, you know, as far as kind of where we have to get to, that's quite daunting. Uh, we're already reaching almost 3 million people every single day. So as far as growth, we want to reach 100 million people within the decade. Uh, we want to work with probably 10 to 20,000 mills to achieve that goal. Um, and right now, our focus, main focus is in Tanzania, in East Africa. But next year, we're launching operations in Kenya. In a couple of years, we'll probably be in Uganda. To Malawi. So I think in 10 years, we'll be in 10 countries, reaching 100 million people, have 300, 400 staff, uh, and taking a huge chunk out of malnutrition. Great. What made you start off with Tanzania? Was there a reason um, that that was where you, where you started a personal story? Or was it just, what was the, yeah, the why behind that? Yeah, so 10 years ago, I was uh, working in, in, in Nepal to develop the technology yeah. after a couple of years. And then uh, the machine got to a certain kind of maturity that we're, well, I guess we we're confident enough to announce that we had something. 
word got out and we were essentially invited to Tanzania by USAID and the government to tackle malnutrition and, and, and use our machine to do so. And so it was an invitation because Tanzania has high uh, malnutrition rates, anemia, uh, stunting, all these things. So uh, I moved there uh, about seven years ago and uh, even presented that first uh, machine to the president of Tanzania. And he challenged me to put one in every village. And we've been doing that every day since. Incredible. Well, it's amazing work that you're doing. And for people listening today, um, how can they get involved? How can they help? Uh, what's the call to action? Yeah, we definitely support. We're a nonprofit. So, um, you know, the more support we get from donors, the faster we can grow, the more people we can reach. And uh, so we've partnered with The Life You Can Save, uh, which was founded by Peter Singer. And they've been a huge champion of our work for many years. And so if you're an Australian, you can donate tax deductible donation through their website, w, uh, thelifeyoucansave.org.au. Um, and if you visit their website, you can also get a free audio book from people like Paul Simon, uh, Stephen Fry. Um, a bunch of celebrities. So who doesn't like free stuff and helping uh, a good cause? Absolutely. Perfect match. Well, Felix, thank you so much for your time today. Is there any, any questions that I've missed? Anything else that you kind of wanted to, to end with? Uh, no, I think, I think we wrapped that up and I can share some um, videos to, which, which gives great visuals to the work we do. And, and um, yeah. That'd be great. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. And um, yeah, thanks again. Definitely. Thank you very much. Take, take care. Have a great day.